Uh, hi guys, how are you going? We're looking at question 6 um, and obviously the first part, part A, B, C and D and also all of those sort of questions go through knowing this sort of shape. Um, if we think about the sector, just if we if we start thinking about a sector, what we've got here, that's a portion of a, of a, of a full circle. All right. So if you think about that being a half a circle, then we know that distance around there is a half of 2 pi r, which is pi r. So generally the formula this is the way I remember it. Um, the circumference is equal to, or the arc length, is equal to theta over 360 times by 2 pi r. So whatever angle you have will be determined by... Um, the fraction of the circle it really is. All right, so that's what I would do with that part. Now I'm not going to worry about doing the first few parts. I think you can sort of go through that. I'm interested in going through from part A onwards. So the first bit says show the arc length equal to this formula here. Well, we know it's got a radius of what? It's got a radius of 10. All right, so if we're looking at part one, so the arc length. We know using our formula over there that the circumference or the arc length C is equal to theta all over 360 times by 2 pi times by 10, which is the radius. All right, so if we keep that in mind, now obviously we can cancel that out with that factor there. We can cancel the 2 out with the 36 and make that 18. And so therefore, <coughs> That arc length is going to be um, theta times by pi all over 18. Again, the way they set these up in the textbook is so if you couldn't do that, then you can still still use that portion of the question and say, well, I know what the arc length is, I can do the next bit. All right, so if the radius of the cone is R, explain why R is equal to this thing over here. <coughs> well, if we think about that, uh, you've got a diagram there. We know that this arc length here is going to be this base of the bottom of the, of the thing. Right? That forms the base of this particular cone. So <coughs> what we could say for this part here is that we have uh, 2 pi r, right? which is what we're looking at there, is equal to theta pi over 18 so that's that area, uh, distance around the base keeping in mind this is what we're trying to show our thing to be right? so we're trying to show it's actually this so we know where we're going we can look at where, where, we're, where we're at so obviously we've got a pi on both sides we can cancel that and then r is equal to theta now bring the 2 on the bottom line that becomes equal to 36 right? so <coughs> Again, they're giving us the answer, so if we're not quite sure how to work what we're doing, um, we've got that. Now, if H is the height of the cone, we need to show that H is equal to that. Well, if we think about this triangle here, then what we've got here, or well, this this cone, we take that portion of it, it's a right angle triangle, they've even shown it in the diagram. So therefore, we know that the... the um, term H, now we know this part of the cone is in fact going to be 10, this slant height over here is 10 centimetres, so you need to show that so if we use Pythag for part 2, no uh, part, yeah sorry, part 3 okay, so part 3 so we could even just write Pythag there, so you sort of tell me what you're using, we know that 100, uh, 10 squared is equal to h squared plus r squared all right now what we can do is see if therefore so h therefore h is equal to the square root of 10 squared plus not plus but we be take you have to take the r across so therefore that will be take r squared and so therefore we know that's equal to simply 100 take r, we know r is equal to theta all over 336 squared. So we're showing that part again. Again, it's sort of giving you the idea. If you can't do it, well, I'll give you the answer. 
So it's about showing the steps. So you need to make sure you show the steps. Part four, if V zero is a cone capacity, find that in terms of theta only. All right, so that's what we're trying to do here. We'll go back to black. So, so we know the volume of a cone is equal to any pyramid shape. There's always a third area of the base. All right, the area of this base is in fact pi r squared times by the perpendicular height h. Now what we do know is we've got h in terms of theta, we've got r in terms of theta. So therefore we can say that's equal to a third and then we've got theta on 36 squared and we know h is equal to the square root of 100 take theta on 36 all squared. All right, so that's my volume in terms of theta only. And then the next part says, use technology to sketch this function. All right, so next year you'll get to probably differentiate this, but this year all we have to do is graph it. All right, so going to our um, graphy bit. All right, so what we're going to do there is uh, put in our formula. So remembering our formula was what? A third times by theta on 36 squared, and then you times them by the square root of that. So, so that's going to be 1 divided by 3 times by, uh, now we'll just use x as our theta v, divided by 36. In the bracket there we have to square that. Now we're timesing that by the square root of, that's going to be 100. Take uh, bracket x divided by 36, and then we square that, and that's it. All right, so now we can graph that. Again, I don't know where your calculator is at, so we need to try and find where this function goes. It's probably good to have a bit of an appreciation where it might be. Um, but if we don't, we can just, just go zoom zero, okay, zoom zero, and that will give me a portion of that particular function, hopefully. All right, you can see we're going to a, a, a minimum point there, so obviously I'll need to scale that out. Um, probably don't need to go to 100, so I'll probably go down to say something like 10, and probably don't need to go to 24 either, so let's probably go to something like 5. Try that and graph that. Bit of a strange graph. Um, so yeah, minus 10 just so we see what's going on over here. Um, let's go down to minus 2 to 5 and we'll graph that. Well, I need to really zoom in on that area. I need to go a little bit closer there, I think. So if we go to window, let's go probably to, say, 1. Let's go minus 1. Hmm. That's an interesting curve. Um, what am I trying to show here again? And that's what you need to keep asking yourself. What am I trying to show in the question? And I'm trying to show, use technology to graph that. We're trying to find a maximum. So I'm actually not even near the maximum, am I? So I've been zeroing in probably on a, on a turning point, which is a, is a negative thing, and that's easy to do. So probably what I need to do is I need to rescale right out. I think my maximum's out here somewhere. All right, so in terms of this question, I need to change my window. Let's go back to, um, let's make that 500. All right, and let's make that 1,000. Okay, so we'll make our maximum 1,000 and see if we've got a, a function that's doing something. So hopefully we'll graph. Struggling with the graph here, guys. Um, Maybe I'll just make that 500, not to 10,000. No, I can see what it's doing. I'm starting to get the idea. Oh, beauty. All right, so you have to have an appreciation of what the, um, the, the actual answer might be. 
So again, over here, what I'm looking to do is find the max of that. So it's number four. And so left-hand side, scroll across to the right-hand side. All right. So that's going to give me an answer for X of 239.94. Okay, 239.94. All right, so 239.94. And again, our graph that we've got here using technology is a graph of theta versus the volume in terms of theta. And that's going to be a graph, something like that. It's a sketch. We know we made that. Um, let me make the scale on that. So just check that. So that's 500 and 500. All right, so 500. And that was 500, and we know that point there has an x coordinate of 239.94, and then we also know the other coordinate of that point there, which is my uh, y intercept. Oh, I have to regraph that. So 4, enter, enter, enter. All right, so with that, it's 128.3. So that tells me what my volume is going to 28.3. Uh, so with my theta at 239.94 degrees, I'm going to have a volume of 128.3, maybe cubic centimetres. So if I go back to my question, what I've got to answer, so use technology, graph it. Use technology to find theta and find the volume max. So that's what I need to identify from my graph. Again, next year we go on to looking at the calculus part of that, so proving that to find exact values. This year we're really just using our calculators to find those values. All right, so uh, maybe have a go at that question again yourself and do all parts of that. Um, and I hope this helps.